Guys, hear me? A little closer. Good. All right. I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who has been by my family's side during this tragic time. For those who are watching on Facebook, 6ABC, I want to thank you for joining us. The last eight weeks have been extremely difficult, to say the least. You cannot imagine the pain that our family has experienced. This is not the way we wanted to say goodbye to my father. It's just not fair. When the time is right, we will give my dad the proper send-off. Everyone knows that my father was a Philadelphia police corporal, but he was much more than that. He was a son, a brother, a husband, a father, son-in-law, a grandfather, and a good friend to many. I mentioned that my dad was a son. It was clear how much he loved his parents, my grandparents. If he wasn't at their house visiting with them, he was on the phone checking on them. My grandparents were my dad's first best friends. My dad was also a brother to my Uncle John. They had a unique relationship. They loved to the joke with one another, and they always laughed it out. My dad was a husband to my mom. My parents met at a very young age. Shortly after, they fell in love with one another and started a family. As a husband, he took care of my mom in many different ways. There's no doubt that he loved my mom unconditionally. My dad was a father to me and my sister Kelsey. His and my mom's guidance formed us into who we are today. There is no doubt that I'm a Philadelphia police officer and Kelsey is an airman in the United States Air Force because of the love and support and direction that he provided. My dad was a son-in-law. It was clear that he cared for them very much. It's not uncommon for my parents to go on vacation with my mom's parents. How many son-in-laws would voluntarily go on vacation with their in-laws? My dad was a new grandfather to my daughter, Kaylee. I had the opportunity to tell my dad that Nicole was pregnant with Kaylee on his birthday, 
on January 24th, 2019. My dad and my mom could not be more excited for me and Nicole. I do remember my mom getting extremely excited and questioning, looked at my dad and said, what are we going to do? We just became empty nesters. My dad just looked at my mom and said, with a puzzled face, well, they have their own house. We're going to continue to do what we have been doing, and it's not our kid, it's our grandchild. My dad was a friend to many. The list of people that I would need to name would require me to go on and on and on. The one thing that my dad would definitely be remembered for is his availability. Now, my dad was a definition of unique, one of a kind. My dad was the kind of guy who would drop anything he was doing just to help someone. He never saw anyone with the amount of energy that he had. He absolutely had undiagnosed ADHD. Tell me I'm wrong. He went a mile a minute, definitely in a good way. He just always wanted to keep busy. It's a quick little example for you guys. Before my dad went to last day out, he was in two squad. For those who don't know what that is, it's rotating night work and day work. Day work, 7 a.m., 3 p.m., night work, 3 p. to 11 p. So the days that he was on day work, him and my mom would be home together. My mom has a routine. She comes home from work. She loves sitting in traffic for two hours a day. She comes home. Every day, it's the same thing. We usually just steered clear of her because she was fired up. Then she makes dinner, does what she has to do, lays on the couch and watches and catches up on her recorded shows. So when my dad was on day work, it would drive him nuts because they would be home together and he's always wanted to do something. He would say, guess this is what we're doing tonight, watching Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune again, so much fun. I'm going to bed. My mom would say, it's 7 o'clock on a Tuesday in January. What do you want to do? Where, do you, where are we supposed to be doing? He would go, oh, I'm, going, I'm going to bed. Goes up the steps, hear the fan go on. Seven minutes later, fan's off, down the steps. I'm going to the gun shop, see how it's boring. Hi, Mom. See ya, have fun. Couldn't sit still. The fact that the police department was pretty much his third job shows how active he was. He loved it. He loved doing electrical work for his friends, even if it was just putting in a simple outlet or a light switch. Something he would say, easy job, it should only take 15 minutes. I'll be home, don't worry. Three hours later, Comes home, all fired up. The lights were this way, the guy who did it before is an idiot. You know, nothing's ever easy in my life. Favorite quote, just my luck. That goes right into this situation that we're in right now. Eight weeks ago, my dad gives the ultimate sacrifice for this city and can't even be buried right. So, my dad was a cop, electrician, and a realtor. This is one of my favorite stories to tell about my dad. I tell it all the time. So September of 2018, I was looking for a house. I was ready to move out. So I'm working day work, 3522 car. Phone rings, noonish. Dad, yo, what's up, Dad? How are you? Yo, I bought a house for you. You're all good. He signed your name. It's all good. I'm like, where? How much? Huh? I got to go. I'll call you back. I got to call you on the real. I'll it in. Hang up. To my partner, I think I just bought a house. I don't know where. My dad signed my name, said everything's good. Everything's good. And it was. House was perfect. I didn't have to do a single thing to it. Fully furnished, and it was just awesome. So this leads into him having a guy for everything. So I live in a twin, and then the steps that go down to my yard, the concrete was a little, like, broken up. So I said, uh, I got with this one guy that... Um, he does concrete. And he's like, all right, well, I have my concrete guy come over. You have your concrete guy come over. And we'll get an estimate. We'll do the best one. I'm like, I don't have a concrete guy. I have a friend that does concrete that I goff with. All right, whatever, whatever. So if you were to go to my dad's phone right now and just type in guy, it would pop up. It would say concrete guy, roofing guy, deck guy, plumbing guy, garage guy, window guy, tax guy, and a jewelry guy. He's out of his mind. People may think I'm joking. I could not be any more serious. My mom's garage door was not working. It wasn't closing the right way. So what does she do? Grabs my dad's phone, types in garage, garage guy. Comes over, fix it, all good. You're going to be telling Jimmy stories forever. My cousin Mike Moore runs a fantasy football league. Me and my buddy John Cinco are partners in it. 
So me and my friends do our own fantasy football thing too. We usually went up the mountain, so our mountain house, and we did the draft up there every year until last year with the schedule now. So just so happens Mike's draft fell on the same day as mine. So I look forward to this weekend every year, so I'm like, I'm going up the mountains with my friends. So I'm like, for those who don't know fantasy football, you can never, it's terrible to draft over a phone. It's, for a live draft, it's brutal. So, just imagine my dad calling every 10 minutes saying, this guy's going, we're, so we're on the fifth round. Those who don't know fantasy football, you know, you still need, like, you know, you got two running backs, three wide receivers, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't even have a quarterback yet, or even like my, my rest of my starting offense. Fifth round, yo, that's kicker still available. Like, it should be, it's the fifth round. I don't take him to the last two rounds, a kicker and a defense. I'm just telling you, I'm just saying the kicker's still available. You wanna take the kicker, you take the kicker, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, I'm good. Give me Tom Brady or something. All right, all right. He wants Tom Brady. He doesn't want a kicker. Idiot. Hang on. I'll be back 10 minutes later. Now, same thing. Until we get to like 11th round. He goes, kicker just went. I said, should be. You know, it's getting, everyone has their starting quarterback and everything. And like, all right. Well, thank God I still have 31 other ones to choose. You know, like, out of his mind. So that's a story that can just, it's going to be told forever. Me and my friend Senko, we laugh about it all the time. So staying on the mountain subject. My dad and my grandpa went off on my dad's days off, usually once a month, to install or fix something. Usually blamed me and my friends for breaking something. Now, you know, there's just a reason for them two to go up there. They loved it. They had a great time, and it was mainly just going up, doing what they had to do, and then hanging at the kitchen table and drinking beers. My dad probably infamously done it. Oh, I'll be right back. I got to go to the bathroom. You leave just sitting there. On the bathroom break, you know, I didn't hear the fan go on. I got sleeping. It's the king of it. I do it all the time. So. I'm not going to get into any hunting stories, but my dad's first love was hunting. You know, it was. He loved it. i never seen anything like it. Like, I would trust him. If I had an apple in my hand 50 yards away, he'd hit it. So, I can go on for hours about my dad. This is not the way that life is supposed to be. Not for me, my dad, my mom, my sister, or my family. My dad was a hard worker, and he enjoyed life. Our lives, meaning my family's lives, will never be the same. I want my dad to be remembered for who he was and how he touched each and every one of us. Dad, I promise that I will take care of everything. You made me into the man I am today. You will be missed by so many and you will be forgotten. Never be forgotten, sorry. I love you, Dad, until we meet again. Thank you.
listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection through your departed servant Jimmy also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as a sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. In the time of the, their visitation, they shall, sh sorry, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with the holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, 
so too will God through Jesus bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not pre precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again to take you to myself. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. On behalf of Archbishop Perez, our Mayor Kinney, Commissioner Outlaw, Father Wetzel, the chaplain of the FOP, and myself and all of the parishioners of Our Lady of Calvary, our sincere sympathies to you, Terry, to you, Jimmy, to you, Kelsey, to you, Carol and Jim, to Nicole and Callie and John and Terry's parents, Greg and Joanne. Know that you have been in my thoughts and in my prayers during these last few weeks. I was thinking of the police motto honor, integrity, and service. And well, one thing that we have seen all over in our northeast section of Philadelphia in almost every window is 8162, Jimmy's badge number. I was taken, Terry, he's your Jimmy. He's your Jimmy. And your Jimmy, who you were married to for 25 years, was an honorable man who loved you very much. Whether he would wake you up early in the morning to take your walk on the beach, whether in Wildwood or on vacation, or bringing you your cup of tea on the weekend or coffee, he loved being with you. Terry, you were the center of his life. You were the reason why he existed. Whether you went to his prom 
or whether he was always with you. You were at the center of his life, and still you're at the center of his life as he is in the kingdom of heaven, praying for all of you. As I think of honor, integrity, and service, certainly Jimmy was a man of service. Service to the SWAT team for the last 15 years in which he left every day and said, I am going to protect our city. Through all of the police officers that are here today, his squad, who he relied on every time they entered into a house. And I'm quite sure that every police officer that is here today or outside, and the commissioner would agree, it is a job that is of service to the people of Philadelphia, and it is a job where the police put their life on the line every day. I think about just maybe a few years ago, watching how proud Jimmy, your dad, was when he had the badge pinning ceremony and put the badge on you, how proud he was and how proud you looked at each other in the eye and said, my son is a policeman, following on the lines of my father and my daughter. And we think about God's great love for us. God's great love for us never ends. It is a love that never ends because God always does great things for us. I had an opportunity to talk to Jimmy a few times as he was praying before the Blessed Sacrament. And how, and he told me just how much he loved his dad. And how Kelsey always loved, loved her dad. And really, and in a young age, she used to sing the Star Spangled Banner and God Bless America, even to the district. And I was wondering if you were going to sing that today, as you did six, at six years old. Uh, but if you think about his love for everybody, I think about what Jimmy was doing up there. And you knew how Jim was feeling by the grunt. And as he grunted, it was a good grunt, he would go, hmm. And if it was a bad grunt, he'd go, hmm. And so as you think about the life and, and growing up with Jimmy and being part of his life on Carl Street and in the Kensington section of Philadelphia, I was thinking that our life as young people existed in three places. It existed in a place called The Lot, Lighthouse Field, or H.A. Brown. And it was where we grew up in the lot where we learned integrity and that honor and service because I was thinking that anybody that hung out in Kensington and that hung out in the lot, there are at least 15 police officers that came out of Kensington, out of the lot that I know of where we grew up. There was at least one priest, one deacon, and many businessmen who still give back to the Kensington section of Philadelphia. And we were proud where we grew up, and many friends grew up, especially the love of Visitation Parish and the love of North Catholic. His love for North Catholic it was the best. I was teasing the police officers this week that I was talking to that there really only was one school, and that was North Catholic. And as I was thinking about North Catholic, they have a motto. And the motto was tenui nec tomatum, and it means I have taken hold and I will not let go. And I was thinking of Jim's life of service, whether he was doing real estate or working at the gun shop or as a corporal or whatever he did, he did with a passion. He did with a passion because he loved what he did because every time he entered the building, he was a man of faith and a man who trusted in the Lord Jesus. And as I was thinking about that gospel today, it says we have our reassurance that God provides care for us, even though, even if things around us don't always make sense. And sometimes in life, things don't make sense. When we realize that as police go into battle every day, 
Their lives are on the line every day in the midst of their honor, integrity, and service. And when they think about that, that love, integrity, and service, it is a love that's rooted in Christ. It's rooted in faith. It's rooted in the love of the Lord Jesus who gives us that opportunity for eternal life. Eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we celebrate today. New life for your husband. New life for your dad. New life for your son and your son-in-law and your grandson. It's new life in the kingdom of heaven. And he's with Jesus today entrusting all of you to him. In that newness of life, it is Jesus who gives us his comfort and his peace. And so in that first, in that gospel reading, Jesus is saying to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me, because in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. And it's that same dwelling place with God that we celebrate today, that new life for James. As it was tragically taken away, he is in the arms of Jesus. He is in the arms of our Blessed Mother, in that kingdom of heaven, in that kingdom of eternal life. You know, there's a story in the, in the, in the Chicago Tribune, and it's about a little boy named Michael. And Mrs. Smith died, and she was very sad. And the little boy said to his mother, she was about five years old, he said to his mother, why is everybody going in and out of Mrs. Smith's house? And the mother said, well, Mrs. Smith is hurting and everybody is coming to visit. They bring food and they want to make sure Mrs. Smith is all right because she's hurting very much. And so the little boy, he's about five years old, says to his mom, well, what can I do to help Mrs. Smith from not hurting anymore? Well, his mother said to him, his mother said to him, Michael, you go over, and I'm sure you'll think of something. So the little boy knocks on the door and goes, in, goes over, and he says, Mrs. Smith, I just want to give you this Band-Aid so you don't hurt anymore. We, Terry, Jimmy, Kelsey, Carol, Jim, Nicole, Callie, John, Greg, Joanne, you have had many band-aids to help you and guide you on these weeks. I've seen it on Facebook, I've seen it all over, and those band-aids are great when people come to you. But I would recommend today to let Jesus be your band-aid, to envelop you with God's love and God's mercy and the God who saves us and always gives us life. Sometimes it's not easy to have answers for someone that is struck down in the line of duty. And we all need those band-aids in life to give us comfort, to give us peace, to give us hope. And it's God's great love for us that never ends. And Jesus today is speaking to his disciples, reassuring them that he has prepared a place for them in the kingdom of heaven, in that kingdom of new life. You know, at the Easter vigil, the church is in complete darkness. And the Paschal candle is carried up in procession. And the, and the whole church sings, Christ be our light. And the church sings, thanks be to God, because Jesus, who conquered death, who conquered the cross, gives us the opportunity for new life, new life in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we celebrate for Jim today. I want to end with this wonderful uh, thing that was on the back of my cover. When I start my tour of duty, God, Wherever a cry may be, as I walk the darkened streets alone, let me be close to thee. Please give me understanding with both the young and old. Let me listen with attention until the story's told. Let me never make a judgment in a rash or callous way, but let me hold my patience 
Let each man have his say. Lord, if some dark and dreary night, I must give my life. Lord, with your everlasting love, protect my children and my wife. 25 years of marriage, Terry, 25 years of love. Your Jimmy now is in heaven with Jesus. And I'm quite sure Jesus is saying to him today, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my arms. Enter into the arms of the kingdom of heaven. Farewell, Jim. You certainly were a man of honor, integrity, and service. 8162. The great love of God working in Corporal James O'Connor, who is strengthened by his family, strengthened by all of us here present, his squad from his squad from SWAT, and all the police that are outside. That was a police officer who gave his life in the line of duty, who is now in the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of eternal life. If Jim's grandma could come back up again. stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in him. We join our prayers to his. Our brother, Jim, <clears throat> was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> Many friends and members of the family have borne before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many people die in violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all those faith, whose faith is known to all. I'm sorry. Peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the mourners, the family and friends of Jim, seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Jim. Strengthen our hope so that they may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I would ask Jim and Kelsey to please bring up the offertory gifts into the Lord of the Church.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Jimmy, who may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of the blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with that end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, especially Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Newman, St. Catherine Drexel, and all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Jimmy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he was united with your son in a death, in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lower body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When, every, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on all the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who are the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs>
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
invite Mayor Kinney to please come forward to say a few words. I did not have the honor of knowing Corporal O'Connor personally, but since his passing, I've come to learn of his achievements and his selflessness. Corporal O'Connor had an exemplary career in the Philadelphia Police Department, lasting more than two decades, a career that was the epitome of public service. I have learned how that devotion to honor and service extends to the entire O'Connor family. As many of you know, Corporal O'Connor's father is a retired sergeant with 43 years of service. Corporal O'Connor's son, James, is a sixth district police officer. His daughter, Kelsey, is a U.S. Air Force military police officer. His daughter-in-law, Nicole, is a 35th district police officer. And I learned he has several other relatives who wear the Philadelphia Police Department badge with honor. So not only did Corporal O'Connor have an exemplary career, it is clear that he was equally devoted to raising and supporting an extraordinary family. To Corporal O'Connor's parents, James Sr. and Carol, I cannot for a second imagine the pain you have endured in losing your son. To Terry, his wife, and his children and grandchildren, and to all the family members who are here, I only wish I had words that could bring true comfort. All I could offer is this. The courage and devotion you have shown during this unbelievably difficult time is a testament to Jimmy. It is the very same courage he showed each day as he put on his uniform, left his house, and carried out his sworn duty to protect the residents of our city. It is the very same devotion he showed each day in raising a family with Terry and instilling their, in their children the virtues of public service and of kindness and respect for others. I'm sure that Jimmy is very proud of all of you. He is proud of the dignity and respect that you demonstrated in arranging this service under the most unbelievably difficult circumstances and finding a way to honor his life and sacrifice. These are incredibly challenging times for you and for all of us. Know that despite these challenges, despite this pandemic, despite the time that has passed since he was taken from us, the city has not and the city will not forget Corporal James O'Connor. We won't forget the sacrifice he made or the sacrifices your family has made. In the months and years ahead, we will do everything we can to be there for all of you. And it won't be enough. But we owe Jimmy O'Connor a debt of gratitude. I pray that you can find some solace in the way that Corporal O'Connor devoted his life to helping others. I pray that you find equal solace in how much Jimmy O'Connor, your son, your husband, your dad, loved all of you. I pray that all, all we all exemplify that devotion and that love. And may God bless the entire O'Connor family and the Philadelphia Police Department and the city of Philadelphia. God bless you. And now I invite Commissioner Al Wall to speak. Greetings, Archbishop Perez, Father Babowicz, Mayor Kinney, Managing Director Abernathy, <laughs> FOP President McNasby, McNesby, members of the Philadelphia Police Department, and to you, the family of Corporal James Jenny, Jimmy O'Connor. I'm honored that you allow me to take a few words as we remember Corporal O'Connor today. This is a very difficult and painful time, and I cannot imagine how much more difficult your loss has been made during this unprecedented time. Whether here in this church 
or watching the live stream of this service, we have come together to mourn the loss of a man who made the ultimate sacrifice while carrying out his commitment to serve the city of Philadelphia. We grieve his loss and celebrate his gifts to us. Corporal O'Connor spent 23 years proudly working to make Philadelphia a safer city, working with people and communities across the city. As human beings, it is difficult for us to process living in a world of opposites. Jimmy spent the last 15 years working as a SWAT officer. He worked to uphold the law with teams to keep people from hurting themselves, to rescue people held captive by someone threatening to harm them, to defuse potentially explosive situations and prevent harm from coming our way. His service has been nothing shy of heroic. But yet, his life was abruptly stolen from him by someone who is the opposite of what Corporal O'Connor exemplified. Even today, as we celebrate Jimmy's life, we mourn. And we are doing so without the ability to comfort one another as we usually would. As humans, we're social beings, but yet we are remaining distant behind masks, six feet apart, physically cut off from the rest of the world, from each other, without the ability to even physically console and sense emotions through touch because of the protocols we must now follow. We must stay apart in order to be together. Terry, I know Jimmy was your world, and he still is. The void left behind by Jimmy's loss will never, ever, ever be forgotten. In fact, his legacy of connection through family and service will continue on. For those of you with us virtually today, service is in the O'Connor's family's DNA. As you may have heard previously, his father, Jim, is a retired police sergeant after almost 40 years of service. His son, Jimmy, Lil Jimmy, is an active officer in the 6th District. His daughter, Kelsey, is active duty in the United States Air Force. And a host of cousins proudly wear the badge of Philadelphia police officers and dispatchers. And to Jimmy, Lil Jimmy, and Nicole, you never know. Callie may become a police officer like her mommy and daddy. And her grandfathers, you never know. If I've learned nothing else about the O'Connors, I know that like myself, family and friendship and their connection with one another is at the very core of their being. It was apparent whether at the hospital that very dreadful morning while present at their O'Connor family's home, or even downtown at the police administration building. They were all present in support of one another. For those of us who make up his police family, losing our brother in blue has been devastating. But we will honor him by never forgetting his sacrifice. Let his courage be an inspiration to each of us as we carry out our duties every day, even during these unprecedented times. Honor his sacrifice with your commitment to fighting and preventing crime, our professionalism, and to the communities we serve. To the O'Connor family, on behalf of the entire Philadelphia Police Department, we salute Corporal O'Connor's service. We remain here for you, and it is indeed with a heavy heart that we bid our fallen brother farewell. In closing, the Medal of Honor is awarded to the family of a fallen officer whose death results from actions judged by the police commissioner to be of such commendatory and exemplary nature, epitomizing the honorable history of Philadelphia law enforcement. The Purple Heart 
is awarded for an extraordinary act of courage without regard for personal safety while engaged in actual combat with an armed and dangerous adversary and sustained a serious bodily injury. The Sergeant Robert Wilson III Medal of Valor is awarded for an extraordinary act of courage with regard, with, without regard to personal safety while engaged in actual combat with an armed and dangerous adversary. Corporal O'Connor's actions on March 13, 2020 are in keeping with the highest traditions of the Philadelphia Police Department. His heroism and sacrifice on behalf of us all can never fully be repaid and will certainly never be forgotten by the Philadelphia Police Department. It is my honor to award Corporal O'Connor with each of the aforementioned commendations. Terry, it is my solemn privilege to bestow you with Corporal O'Connor's Medal of Honor. The awards for the Purple Heart and Sergeant Robert Wilson III Medal of Valor and accompanying ribbons are currently worn on his dress uniform. May God, may God bless and keep each of you. Let us pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Jimmy may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jimmy and Kelsey, uh, I unite my words to Mayor Kenny and, and the Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Outlaw, and expressing uh, really gratitude to you, because we, the citizens of the city, uh, certainly owe the Corporal uh, great gratitude that there's no words or anything we could do that will actually repay that. But you also made an incredible sacrifice. You made it every day. When, when your husband and your dad left the house and, and put on his uniform and badge, uh, potentially to run into places where everybody was running out. And that's, that's just amazing to me, right? That, that uh, those of you who serve us, whether it be the police department or the fire department, you run into places where, when everybody's running out in the opposite direction. What brings an individual to even want to do that? At the end, it's care. It's care. It's love. Um, when Jesus was asked, uh, when Jesus wanted to explain what does love look like, he said that, that there is no greater love than the love of one who lays down his life for his friends. He went and he did it himself. We celebrated that, remembered that several weeks ago. But the story didn't end there for him. It did not end on Good Friday. Because powerfully, the, he rose from the dead. And that's actually what we celebrate here today. We celebrate that, that even though life as Jimmy understood it and you experienced it, changed, it didn't end. It didn't end. 
That story got repeated all over again in Jimmy's life just over eight weeks ago. When, when he ran into a building to protect us, when everybody was running in the opposite direction and, and was called upon to, to be a friend and to lay down his life for his friends, for you, for me, for all of us. But it also had an incredible impact on you. And, and, in, and in Jimmy's passing, part of you passed away too. Part of you died, died too. And that part cannot be filled with anyone or anything else. But because we celebrate mystery, this mystery in terms of life, also that part which died will also become life-giving to you. Hold on to that. When I uh, had the chance to spend some time with you several weeks ago, I, I left you with a little quote from a saint, if you remember. St. John Chrysostom. And we, I told you that he lived a long, long, long time ago. And I remind you of his words as we walk out of here today. Those we loved and lost and are no longer with us are now with us wherever you, we are. Remember. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Jimmy, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness and parting, but a comfort and hope that one day we shall see Jimmy again and enjoy his friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. That together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which is bestowed upon Jimmy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another in assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Jimmy forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest.
seeing astrophysics,